we're done, I will say there's usually a demon that I call the CEO or the bandmaster, the choir director. He's not usually the overt one that pops off because if he pops off, then you have a way of identifying it. Uh, because if something says, you're an idiot, you're a fool, and you hate Jesus, it's very easy to say, Lord, if that was a demon telling me I'm an idiot, I'm a fool, please kick the stuffing out of that thing. Well, the, the CEO isn't that stupid. The CEO is the one who tells the joke to someone next to him in class, and then they tell the joke, and then they're the ones that laugh, and then they're the ones the teacher sends out because the one that told the joke in the first place doesn't get caught because he's too smart. So the CEO is usually slick. So what I've said is, here's how you go after the one who's the band leader. In other words, he's the one that keeps all the instruments playing. He's the one as the CEO and keeps everybody doing their job. Here's what you do. It's not hard to get him, and it'll be the last one you'll have to work with. Say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive all of the sin and cancel all of the ground that has anything to do with that spirit holding the highest authority in my life other than the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I want the Holy Spirit in my life, and he would be the spirit holding the highest authority in my life because he's God. But any demons, I don't want anything to do with any of them. So would you forgive all of the sin and cancel all of the ground that has anything to do with that spirit holding the highest authority in my life other than the Holy Spirit? He's the boss of whatever's left. If there's anything we've missed, this is the boss. Thank you, Sir Jesus Christ. And I'll say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that spirit holding the highest authority have anything to do with Spongetta other than the Holy Spirit come forward. You're the one that's kept everybody else on task. You're the one that's usually too smart to get caught. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, come forward now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bring all of your works, effects, associates, their works, and effects. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command, we put a strong hedge of thorns above you, below you. You're not going to get any help. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, what's your name? Whatever the name is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, what's your job? And to keep everybody doing their job. Uh, that's exactly what my job was. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you leave, you understand you're taking everything with you. Every room in that house is to be, have the lights back on, shining for Christ. I understand. Get it over with. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command and whatever, you know, whatever, whatever the name was, take all of your works and effects, all your associates, leave. That person will be done. And Holy Spirit, fill everything that was vacated. Then the last thing I'll tell a person, Travis, is I want you to focus on three things. And I write all of these in the books. And none of this, this is all all written out. I'll say, I want you to practice keeping short accounts with sin. Why? The thing that typically opens up doors to demons is habitual sin that doesn't get dealt with. So when you deal with your sin sooner than later, it doesn't give them anything to hold on to because you're giving it to Christ. Mm. So I've said, it's like, it's like something that's trying to climb up a, a, an ice face. And if you don't deal with it, you give it long enough, it can take a piton hammer and it can make a place for its hand. And then it can switch the hammer and hit it, and it can put another hand. Now it's got two places to hold on. You give it long enough, it can put an ice cave in there. You can throw a sleeping bag in it. But when you deal with it, it's like the whole front just gets all iced up again, and there's nothing to hold on to. They say when you confess your sin, it gives them nothing to hold on to, no top us, no place or space or territory. So I said keep short accounts. Second thing, I want you to practice the offensive prayer. Instead of running in fear, if a demon says, hey, I'm back, well, that's a lie, because if it was sent to the pit, it'll never come back. But one of its buddies that's networked with it may say, hey, isn't that Spongetta? And that girl was so easy to guilt. Let's tip up an arrow and say, hey, I'm back. My name's Fred, and I'm stronger than Jesus. Now, she's supposed to go into total panic mode and go, oh, no, it didn't leave. It's stronger than Jesus. I go, no, it's an imposter. It knew what the name was. Here's what I want you to do. Instead of running in panic, say, Lord Jesus, that imposter saying its name's Fred is just trying to pull me into fear. I'm not going. Would you kick that sucker to the dirt? Beat the tar of it, tell them off limits. Thank you in Jesus' name. I get a call, say, Carl, it left in two seconds, and now there's, it's just quiet again. Instead of two hours of staring at my navel, I go, welcome to spiritual warfare. Apparently, they still don't like you. But see, instead of running or being fixated on them, all you say is, if you're stupid enough to shoot your arrows at me, I'm smart enough to ask God to put the arrows out. Mm. I'm smart enough to ask him to fight against you. So instead of you thinking, I'll volunteer to attack Carl because all he'll do is run. He's fun. Now it's like, do I have to go after him today? Because the guy has learned he can fight back because God will stand up for him. And if he figures out, I just tried to torch him with an arrow, he's going to ask God to send that arrow right back down my throat, kick my teeth in. I don't want him. You can have him today. I got him yesterday. 
I don't want Travis. He fights back. He hit Travis. Mm -hmm. Way better to have them saying, I don't want him than volunteering. So I say you keep short accounts with sin. You make a very effective use of that offensive prayer. And then I'll say, lastly, enjoy reading your Bible. And they'll look at me and they'll say, what do you mean by that? And I'll say, I already know what Bible study is like for you. You've been demonized for years, yeah? Uh, reading Bible for you is a chore. You can feel tired before you've even had a chance. You can get so tired, it's like I can read a novel for three hours. But I'm 10 minutes in my Bible and I, it's like I've taken Salmonix or something. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just poop. And I'll, I, I bet there's lots of distractions. Yeah, I start thinking about my to-do list or the phone starts ringing, whatever. And it's always when I'm trying, I said, here's what I want you to do. When you open your Bible, I just want you to pray, Father in heaven, the things that have been such a distraction, they're gone. Would you please teach me something so I can love you more dearly? And would you please give me something I could share with someone else? Thank you in Jesus' name. And it's going to be 100% quiet. Hmm. It's going to be like you can hear a pin dropping. And they'll say, it's never been that way. My mind is just flooded with accusations and confusion. They don't want you reading the Bible. They don't want you drawing near to God. Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. They don't want that. Uh, they sure don't want you to figure out you can resist them. So what happens? They open their Bible, and I'll get a phone call saying, Man, I've, it, you mean people that aren't demonized have a quiet like this when they have their Bible study and they can focus on loving? Yes, I've not had that for 30 years or 20 years or whatever. Do they know how good they've got it? No, because they've never experienced. Would you want them to go through what you're going through? No, I wouldn't. Then just be glad for them. And now you rejoice in something. I'll make a bet. You will never again take for granted reading your Bible. Hmm. Because when you open that Bible up and it's quiet, you're going, God Almighty, thank you for freedom. And now I want to learn. I can love you more dearly. Give me something to teach someone else. Instead of figuring, you can just pop your Bible open anytime you want. You know, you know, it's, you know, it's, okay, you know eating, a, eating a croissant and drinking a glass of milk. And then, uh, no, no, man, I'm getting God Almighty's meeting with me. So what I'm saying is you will begin to enjoy your Bible reading instead of feeling like your Bible reading is a minefield, which no matter what you think, what you say, what direction you go, there's a bomb blowing up on you. So you just get tired and you just shut the Bible down and say, I don't know how people say they enjoy this because, man, for me, it's a war. And I am mentally worn out before I even get done. So I'll do it out of obedience. But, man, it's, it's hard. And you know what, Carl? You know something funny? I said, tell me. Anytime I went to the stuff on demons in the New Testament, I would always skip over it because it scared me. You're not even smiling, Carl. No, I've heard that a time or two. It's like I can read a lot of the stuff, but we didn't have to do with the demonic stuff. There'd just be something inside me that's, you know, that's, yeah. And I'd skip over it. Now I can read that like I can read anything else. Hmm. There's freedom. So what am I saying? I'm saying, first, I try and assess what is it. That's why I wrote that chapter 11, the new chapter, just trying to discern what is it. Chapter 12, if it's, if it's the real thing, if that's what you believe it is and you think they'll fight, I give them three non-negotiables, Travis. I say, one, you got to be a Christian, because if you're not a Christian, demons have no fear of you. They don't fear you. They, they don't fear your title. They fear Christ who lives in you. If you're a Christian, you can make them go. Your authority is greater than theirs because your boss is greater than theirs. Two, you've got to be 100% honest about anything that opens doors to them. If you want to compartmentalize, if you want to try and hide things, all demons will say is, how can you say you're fully committed to Christ when you're deliberately giving us things we can still work in? Christ can have this, but not this. He can have this, but not this. When you're ready to say, Jesus, this life was yours, Galatians 2.20 says, I gave all the rights to me up to you. Do with me what you want. You can surrender fully. Demons will say, we're not welcome here. But as long as you're saying, well, you can have my sex life, but you can't have my job. Or you can have my job, but you can't have who I'm going to marry or not marry. Or you can, uh, they're just going to say you're complicit because you're giving us the right to stay because you're purposely withholding stuff from Christ and you know it. So I'll say, number one, are you a Christian? Number two, you'll be honest 100% about anything that needs to be dealt with. And then thirdly, you'll fight. Demons want you to run in fear. The Bible says you're to resist firmly in your faith, which means you dig, you're dig, you digging in and fighting. I'm not putting up with it. Instead of listening to them, well, they're smarter, they're stronger, so I'll run. You're just playing it their way. And as long mm -hmm. as, I've said demons are like dogs. As long as you run from them, they'll chase you. 
I learned as a paper boy, bro. I was a paper boy for years. <laughs> People would leave their dogs out. I would run from the dogs. I was scared. They'd bite. I, they'd bite me. You know, they bite. I didn't like that. I started carrying a baseball bat or a sawed off bat and a pellet gun. I said, if you're going to let your dog out on me, I'm going to shoot your dog. So you either keep your, how about that? That's as a chip. Right? <laughs> I said, either you keep your dog in or you stop the paper, but I'm done. You know, that, I, that, now I go out with my brother one Sunday morning. And my brother, I asked him to help me throw him for, I was in a hurry for something. They had a baseball game or something. I don't know what it was. And a big old German shepherd that was always there at the driveway to meet me and would chase me halfway down the street. But I'd finally get, you know, tired of the game. My brother looks at me and he says, for the shame of it, brother. And he says, what? I said, what do you mean? He said, that thing wants to eat me. He says, that thing needs to know you're a better dog than it. I said, what do you mean? And he says, watch this. He says, give me a couple of your papers. We drive back to that house. That big dog comes out snarling. My brother runs the bike right at it and starts throwing papers at it and saying, you shut up, you get out of here, I'm going to beat this. You know, that dog turned around, went down to the end of the driveway and just stared at him. And he said, that dog knows I'm a better dog than it. He said, he said, you teach these dogs that you're a better dog than them. Your days are running over. I started that day and I never ran from a dog again. Never. Mm. They would come out. I would go right at them. I didn't carry a pellet gun anymore. I didn't carry a sawed off bat anymore. I'd just take one of my papers. I'd scream it. They'd run down. Then the next day, they'd see me coming. They'd look up and put their head right back down. Demons are like dogs. They chase Christians because Christians run. And as long as the Christians run, then they know that Christian is more afraid of me to hurt it than they are willing to trust Christ will protect them. So we're just going to keep chasing them. So this whole stuff mm -hmm. about run from demons and they won't bother you, they may say it sincerely. It's just an invitation to continue to get chased. When the demons figure out, you know, you're a better dog than I am because your master is greater than my master. So just get it over with. Mm. Just get it. I've had demons. Now you think, I, I, don't, I don't care what you think. I'm telling you the truth or not. I have, I've had demons <laughs> say to me, I've had demons say to me, get it over with and don't be cruel. 